Hey, in this video, let's take a look at what it would take to loft uh, something. So what I'm going to do is I'm uh, here in my perspective view. I'm going to go in my uh, top view and just press space bar to go into it. So here I am in the top view. I'm going to go to my curves tab and I'm just going to grab something like EP curve here. And what I'm going to do is create a cool uh, vase by just simply lofting the uh, object. So let's go ahead and try that. So let's, I'm going to create a silhouette of my vase. So maybe something, something like this. And if I wanted to, I can, of course, move these points around. So think of this as a silhouette of a vase, right? And my goal uh, is to create a game object. So I really want to make sure it's going to be clean and uh, low poly, right? So maybe maybe something like this. So let's see what that looks like. All right. So now once I have this, I'm going to go to my object mode. So I have this line. And uh, next, what I would like to do is just simply press this button here. And that is called revolve. Um, that's what it's called. It's called revolve. So I'm going to click on it. And once I do, if I go into my perspective view, I can see that I uh, am faced with something very strange looking. But if I go to my attribute editor, I could see that the axes at which this object is revolving is on Y, right? If I put my Y to zero, you could see that I am now uh, faced with something really cool looking, right? And essentially, I can now use this to create what I'm looking for. So very quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply click on my rotate tool, hold down the J key, and that will um, activate my step snap, which is currently set to 15 degrees. And then I can rotate this. On the bottom left, it says, um, it tells me how far I rotated the object. So right now I'm at 90 degrees. I can just kind of put it on my grid. And here we are. So this is my vase, right? So now I still have this curve. If I wanted to, I could go to poly modeling and I, cl I could, um, let's see, click on this button here to delete by type. And that will disconnect my geometry from my curve. So now I just simply delete, press delete key. And the next thing I need to do is turn this into polygons, right? So right now these are nerves and I need polygons. So to do that, go to modify, convert, and we want to click on this uh, button here. It says nerves to polygons. And let's go to options and sneak a peek uh, what's going on here. So Let's see, the type is triangles. Maybe we want uh, quads. And the rest, I think, let's reset this, make sure it's same as yours. But I'm going to say quads, and I'm going to just say, say standard fit and just say apply, see what that looks like. All right, so as soon as I do, um, if I move this guy aside, I can see what Maya gave me. And I think. It's very interesting, but it doesn't really look like the geometry is uh, very well created for a game engine because we clearly have something that's not just quads, right? Even though it's low poly, I can see here in my heads up display that it's 372 polygons, which is really cool. But I kind of need this to be a little more um, quad like so I don't have these strange uh, formations. So now uh, let's go ahead and maybe make another one. Let's go to count. And you see when I uh, press count, I have much different uh, looking geometry. Now all of this is actually looking good because all of these are quads, right? And you can see if I select, if I actually turn on this button here, wireframe unshaded, you could see the difference between these two. And this object here is only 209 faces. So it's perfect for a, a, a low poly game engine 
uh, asset, right? So let's say I'm happy with this. So next I'm going to delete these two. I don't need them. I'm going to put this guy in the center. And there's a couple different ways I can do that, but I'm just going to go to my top view, hold on the X key and just snap it to the middle of the grid. All right. And one thing I could do if I select this edge, uh, this is a little bit too low poly for me. So let's go ahead and click this bevel button and adjust it just a little bit. So it's a little more uh, sexy looking. So it's, the neck is not so um, low poly. All right, so let's say I'm happy with this. Um, I could always select all of these edges, go to select, convert selections and do to uh, verts. And then I can click on this button here to kind of connect them. All right, that would be the bottom. And for the top of my vase, um, I can of course do the same. Or if we wanted to, we could actually make it just a little more interesting. How about we actually extrude this down like this? And maybe we don't need to go all the way, but I'm going to grab my scale key and just do something like this. If we click on this button here, we can see our X-ray. We can go into a side view and actually let's do the same thing. And now I can actually see how this fits so I can push it low enough, but I want to make sure it doesn't go through the edges there, right? Okay, so let's uh, turn off x-ray. And now, of course, in the bottom, we have a hole there, right? Let's close that up. Um, we can do that by just going to mesh, fill, uh, fill hole. All right, so that's done. And if you are not happy with the fact that it's not a uh, quad base, um, of course, you can fix that. You can do a couple things. We can actually delete this. And maybe we can actually, um, let's go ahead and scale this in and then do that trick again with select, convert to verts and merge. And maybe this will be uh, better if you want to avoid um, things that are not uh, game engine friendly because normally you want to keep away from anything besides quads and tries right for a game engine so this this is good uh, next we can actually select our mesh go to mesh display and do a soft edge and that's how simple and quickly I was able to create a nice looking base right and if I wanted to maybe create a fun little uh, plant sticking out of it, let's take a look at the new uh, sweep uh, tool that was added in Maya 2022. So let's see how that works. So I'm gonna go to my top view, go to my uh, curves. And what I'm gonna do now is actually create a curve that I think could be kind of cool for a plant some sort of organic looking plant, maybe maybe something like that. Of course you can make it any shape you want. So let's say I'm happy with something like this. Maybe this is some sort of plant. We can add leaves to it if we wanted to, but uh, let's see. Let's take a look at our uh, new tool here. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just simply select this new um, cool curve I did, and I'm going to go to, let's see, I'm going to go to uh, make sure you're in modeling. And then if you go to create, in Maya 22, you have a new button here called Sweep Mesh. 
if I click on it, you can see that it automatically creates this really cool looking tube, which I can scale any way I like. I can also taper it, which is really cool. Maybe it's a little skinnier on top. I can change the number of kind of the resolution. I want to keep it kind of low poly, right? So that's good. Uh, I can cap it off if I wanted to. And now let's go ahead and center our pivot, hold out the J key and just kind of rotate it up. And let's see, I need 270 degrees. I can also clear my history and delete my curve. Let's go to the side view here and just stick it in our vase. And maybe it's a little too large actually. So something something like that. I don't know what kind of plant this is, but it's it's just to show you guys how to use the sweep mesh. I'm gonna press control D and maybe rotate this a little bit. So we have two of them, make it a little smaller and maybe angle it a little bit. And let's go in our perspective view and take a look. And of course from here we can do things like move this down, make sure it goes actually all the way down, right? But you get the idea. So uh, this is a cool uh, combo way of, oops, probably don't want to do that. A cool combo way of using, um, I can just keep playing and making it keep tweaking it, but you know what? I'm going to need to actually kind of shift. I'm going to use self selection, just kind of shift it aside so they don't. A is going to look even more organic, actually. That's a cool trick. So it's not so perfectly straight. And uh, it will also make sure it doesn't run into the other plant, right? So I can actually do something like this. So some, something more organic looking. All right, so anyways, I wanted to show you guys this uh, cool little workflow of quickly creating low poly uh, objects. So this whole thing right here is only 800 um, polygons. And now you can do the UVs and bring it into Substance Painter and create uh, sweet texture. So this is, um, this is how fun it is. So make sure you uh, take advantage of the loft tools and create really interesting shapes that are, um, that could be used as, you know, cups, UFOs, any kind of fountains, you know, vases, right? So, um, all right. So I hope you found this useful and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.